pretty tight parking job there. While I was doing that. Welcome to the Perkins Workshop, which has been assembled bit by bit over the last 15 years. In today's video, we're going to tackle some of the much needed upgrades and organization to make us more efficient here and more able to film good content in this space. Is this what you used back in the day? Uh, yes, what we used. <laughs> <laughs> I had to walk to work though. What totally. inspired you to do this? Oh, it's all about YouTube, man. You know, I mean, <laughs> my shop, up. my shop looks like such a wreck that you know I need to like make it a little more organized. Okay. And paint it. I'm painting because okay. it's dark. Okay. Okay. So, this this has already been painted the last few days. All the stuff got taken down, painted white. And is that what's happening here? So here's the name of the game: organize, get rid of junk, like out of here, paint the walls. Okay, make it neat. Er. Well, we can hit some highlights of things that we do have that you need for most woodworking projects. We have a giant bandsaw, we have a giant drum sander, a giant vacuum system. That thing sucks though. <laughs> okay. Oh! oh. oh. You're a dad, way to go. We've got a giant planer, a giant joiner, a giant table saw, a giant compressor way down there, and a giant rack of wood. You need wood. You need wood to build stuff out of wood. That's one of those things that, uh, that's trash. That's my old phone, dude. I'll tell you what happens in here. A lot of times I'll be making something and I need like a little table uh -huh. in a hurry like in five minutes, right? Okay. So for the bandsaw, this this got made for the bandsaw as an outfeed table. Okay. So I made this in like five minutes and then I was like, oh, I'll just throw it away. But then it's been here for a couple of years, right? Right. It's gonna get repurposed right now. Get a drawer put in it. And then I'm gonna put all my epoxy stuff on it. Oh. And put it around the corner. That way, you know, I don't care if epoxy stuff gets all over the place. Right. Thing. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that looks like you built it in five minutes and you actually did. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's all that it needed to be, yeah. right? Okay, 10 minutes later, here we go. My new epoxy workstation is here. I have this drawer that came out of a kitchen about five years ago installed. I got a shelf on the bottom where I can stack lots of extra junk that I can't find a home for. And uh, I got some nice lighting here so I can see what I'm doing. I'll probably just sit down and read a book. <laughs> Here's my uh, introduction to loudspeaker design book. That's really interesting. What else you got? Uh, Measured, some shop drawings. Thomas Moser, that's a good one. Jointery, hey. Man, there's Join, a lot. Joinery. Oh, jo oh joinery. I yeah, said jointery, jointery is something it's not different. Jointery. <laughs> like me. Okay, a little bit of uh, machine uh, instructions, fine woodworking. What else here? Uh, more Thomas Moser. Thomas Moser. Wow, Thomas Moser. Trim work. Here we go. There's lots okay. of good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you can learn a lot by reading a book. For sure. That's a book, by the way. Um, yeah, it's got it's... pages. You read it. Words, <laughs> left to right, top to bottom. You don't have to like swipe, it's more like a flip flip yep another prime example of a five minute project i took a bucket from some screws and attached my vacuum hose to it here to make a catch for my chop saw now this has worked effectively here for quite some time many years actually because i could slide it back and forth if i changed the miter now i'm not going to go crazy and make one of these best miter saw dust collector catchers ever or i'm not doing that but i will make one that's slightly better and the best improvement is going to be that i'm going to get rid of this four inch piece of hose I'm gonna go straight from the five into my thing with five, and that'll increase the airflow and catch more dust. Bigger's better. I like that. I'm also trying to make some workflow improvements. For example, this drill press that used to be my grandpa's is always in the way when I'm building larger things on the table. I'm kind of backed up to this. It's in the way I can't get to my clamps. So I moved a lot of wood that was there. See, there's no wood there. There was a Amazing. huge stack of wood right there. Yeah, so it's gone. Well, somewhere else. This is going over there along with the other tools. That shelf's coming down to give me more effective space because you can't really ever get more space than you have, I don't right. think, can you? Something about... Like um, the universe. This isn't a show about physics, bud. And yeah. uh, what is it like matter and stuff? You can't yeah. make matter. You can't make more space. Okay. Also, if you're new to the channel, Jamie's got a little thing about collecting uh, wood. <laughs> and so, this is the other side of the wall in the basement. Lots and lots of wood to build stuff out of. And um, 
I mean, it's literally stacked to the ceiling, so. digging through this pile of stuff in the corner and some of this stuff I forgot I even had. I glued up some of these awesome rusted coffee table tops that I plan to make metal bases for, but guess what? I never had time, so they're still here. I'm gonna give Jason one because he can make it into a table and I don't know about the rest, whatever. I gotta find a place wow, for this. Wow, two more. Yeah. Huh. You want one? Uh, <laughs> maybe. Today we're gonna do a little segment called Name That Bit. And uh, we're gonna do uh, Jamie versus uh, Jason today. So let's name that bit. I'm gonna hold a bit up, okay. and the first one to name it gets a point. Okay. All right, ready? Yeah, can't wait. Oh, inch and a half horse for a bit. One point, Jamie. Okay. You got this. Ooh, blocking miter bit. Yeah. <laughs> two right. points, Jamie. Sorry. Let's see. Let's Sorry. You're doing great. Big though. one. One, two. Whoop. Oh, that's a race panel bit for cabinet doors. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> All right. Let's see how this game's gonna go. I think we can just end the game now. <laughs> Jamie wins. Wait, I had my glasses on. I couldn't see exactly what it was. Yes. Wait, hold on. Oh. Yeah. All right, so next week, I'm gonna bring in all my son's sports equipment, and we're gonna play this game again. Oh, okay. Baseball, football, <laughs> basketball. I guarantee I'll win that one. Jock strap. <laughs> so was he making that crap up, or is that what they're really called? Dude, I have no idea. <laughs> You're... <laughs> Ooh, this is a squirrel yellow bit. This is the uh, make some cool thing out of wood silver shiny bit. Wait, oh, I know this one. This is like the helicopter bit. So you don't really know what this is, right? Okay, that's a call it guided V groove bit for like sign making and template making, stuff like that. It's no big deal. You yeah. know, for like letters. Yeah. Ray J Builder Buddies, you can put that on a board. What's this one do? Uh, it's an extension for a bit. Or oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're building your own workshop, I want to mention one important thing in here you'll notice, uh, because I'm going to tell you, is that all of these tables are the same height, and, and we chose the height based on the table saw deck height. Yep, 35 inches. 35 inches, and that's so that the workspace is flat. Basically, all of your boards could just slide across, if there wasn't all this junk, of course, across the top of any of these tables, and it, it, they wouldn't basically get in the way. So that's a really important thing, I think, if you're building your own workshop. All right, here's something we're gonna get rid of out of the shop. This is a fun story behind it. That is a 24 inch deep LVL, and this came off of a beam that we put in a house as a ridge beam and it was the biggest ridge beam we've ever done. So it was four ply, that means four of these things all sandwiched next to each other mm -hmm. and 40 feet long. Yep. And I think we calculated that it weighed like 4,000 pounds or something. So that would have been a seven by 24 yes. by 36 or 40 feet. It was super feet. scary. We had a giant crane that lifted it and we all survived. So good story. we're gonna get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, I think, sure. I think Ray can make a good yeah. little workbench table out of that. Is it lunchtime yet? Nope. Hour and 10 minutes, bub. <laughs> Dying. Let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor for today's video. And I want to start out by saying that getting old sucks. Okay? It really does. Like, I remember being able to stay up really late and then get up in the morning and just crush it the whole next day or just work and work and work and then not be tired and then go like work out after that. And now that I'm 40, I don't feel like that anymore. In fact, if I stay up past nine o'clock, I feel horrible the next day. So <laughs> that was my introduction to today's sponsor, which is Hone. I have to add here, of course, that I'm not a real doctor and I'm not giving you medical advice, but Hone, our sponsor, does have real doctors that can give you good advice. So Hone is a comprehensive hormone optimization clinic that helps men to get back their energy focus, libido, and muscle mass by addressing low testosterone. And if you didn't know, if you're a man, your testosterone level is going down as you're getting older by about one to 2% per year. And an interesting study showed that our father's generation had 25% more testosterone than this generation. So if you're feeling tired or unmotivated, it's not just you. Something like 30 million men in America have low testosterone that's affecting their daily lives. The good news is that Hone Health is here to help, and there's a lot more of misconceptions about testosterone 
which is so much more than just a sex hormone, but it is that too. Optimizing your testosterone can lead to an increase in energy, increase muscle mass, more focus, and better overall mood. And Hone helps get men testing and treatment for low testosterone from the comfort of their home with their at-home biomarker test. The entire process is really easy and everything you need is included in the box that you get in the mail. All you have to do is collect your sample and mail it back to the lab in the envelope that's actually included in the box. Once the results are ready, you will video chat with a real doctor who will recommend a personalized treatment plan based on your biomarkers and symptoms. Treatment options include FDA approved medications and everything gets delivered straight to your door. Awesome. Order Hone's easy to use at home assessment test today and learn about your testosterone levels. And for a limited time only, my viewers can get the at home testing and a doctor's consultation for only $45. Click the link in the description below or go to honehealth.com slash Perkins to take advantage today. Thank you to Hone Health for sponsoring our video and let's get back to work. Do you want a Mountain Dew on that one? Diet, and it is uh, diabetic, so just please make okay. sure it's diet. Give me two Cajun chicken club sandwiches. Right, and then two grilled. Cage, two grilled Cajun chicken club sandwiches. Just sandwiches, that's it. Just the sandwiches. You want pimento? No. No, no. no pimento. No. Don't worry, man. You'll get them next time. No problem. What's up? Time for a tour of this place, but oh, man. it's been a few months since I filmed the I know, part I'm of actually the video. trying to clean up right now before you video anything so it doesn't look <laughs> like a mess. So uh, right. give me about 30 seconds. Can you hear anything right now? What? Check. What, what are you what? doing? <laughs> You're screaming. What's <laughs> There you go. All right, now we can check. Right, What's can... with the ears? So we're back in the shop. I never did make the video from when we organized everything until just now. So we're here to tour it, but it looks way different. What happened? Well, some things have changed in a, in a little bit of time. Uh, we got some more equipment in here that we didn't have before and uh, a couple of upgrades. And let me say, that's kind of always happening. So Jamie, it's your shop. Uh, what have you done since then? Let's Go start ahead. over in this area where you saw us organizing and moving all the machinery to this area. Well, this is the funnest part of the shop now, this side. It was pretty boring before, just a stack of wood. But now I've got this awesome Inventables CNC machine that I've been using to make things like this fantastic sign. Uh, I've been flattening wood cookies, which I have a lot of those to flatten, and this one right here is going next. Um, also adding the computer and the kind of stereo station has been excellent. And organizing all my sharpening things into one area. So anything I'm gonna sharpen, I'm coming right here. I've got excellent light. Uh, I've got the Tormek and I've got the uh, big sharpener for blades like planer knives. And also, hey, to look at sharp things. This is the newest thing of all things I have. You just walked away. I got this bad boy. <laughs> yes, yes sir, this is a microscope. Actually, this is a really old one and uh, I had a good buddy that gave it to me. Um, that thing's even older than me. <laughs> but I got a light right here so uh, I can take stuff, you know, whatever I'm working on. Let's just say I sharpened up something. Oh, actually I did sharpen this dentistry tool thanks to uh, Dr. Jim for that. Um, now I sharpened this so I could use it for something specific, but I want to see how sharp is it. So I look in my microscope right here. Oh man, that is looking Are you so sharp. Kidding me? Wow, that is so sharp. I mean, and that's what man, I need to know. That is crazy. So um, that's great. I mean, have a look at it right there. It's I, and, you I, know, yeah. Uh, that's a really nice tool. Okay, well, let's move on. I'm sorry. What were we doing? <laughs> I do want to check out his little workstation here. He has got a brand new Mac computer here. And he's got the oldest freaking keyboard and monitor I've ever seen in my life. Now he does have a subwoofer, which is, uh, oh, is yeah, good. most shops don't have a subwoofer built no, in. Not so at all. That's nice. Let's have a look here at my crazy outfeed table for the table saw. This is actually a downdraft table. And what a downdraft table is, is it's a place where you can hook a vacuum to the bottom of it and the air sucks down through the top of the table, catching dust. Like if you're sanding on something by hand, you're creating dust in the air. I noticed it's also the same height as your table saw yep. and the workbench. It is. And John's cell phone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's Jamie's father-in-law. <laughs> I could put this anywhere in the shop and it's the same height as my other tools. And also I've got these like little adjusters I built for the bottom of the leg. So if it's in a position where it's critical that it's a certain height, I can adjust it and fix it oh, in place. Oh, that's pretty smart. Yeah.
One thing that always bothered me is the hose, this five inch hose was running across the floor to my table saw and okay. I'm stepping over it all the time. So I sawed my slab with the saw and I dropped that pipe down in here and I put a metal cover over it. So I can remove it and have access to it. So it's and recessed in the slab. Now. I won't be tripping on it and my kids won't be jumping on it because they just love to jump up and down on it for some reason. <laughs> I you love that. <laughs> always tell them, quit doing that. Or they just couldn't stop. Uh, and I can roll my carts through here. So I have these tables that are like carts and I can roll them anywhere I want. Now. That's a good upgrade. Yep. I also added extra LED lighting over workstations like this chop saw here where I needed extra light to see my pencil marks. And I actually took the dampers here on the uh, vacuum and I changed everything out to run five inch all the way to the tool. Cause I had some that were choked down to four inch. Yeah, and in the video, we were working on that, but yeah. I don't think we ever completed it, so. It's working now. And it's in a little a track. Larger bucket there. It's in a track. Now okay. you can see the heavy sawdust is still here. What it does best is catch all the airborne dust and it sucks it and it cleans the air. Yeah, it's okay. So you see, you got that. I see the track back there. Yeah, it's there a little track. And uh, yeah, this is about four times bigger than your original. In yeah, in case you're wondering why there is a track, it's because when you go like do a 45, the dust is gonna shoot this way. So now I can move it and catch the dust where the saw is shooting the dust. One problem I'm having though, the cats that we got at Christmas time, the kittens, they think this is their litter box. Because <laughs> they like problem. to be down here in the shop. I mean, who wouldn't? So you can't blame them. But Yo, I, Jason, can you clean out the sawdust collector? <laughs> <laughs> Why does it smell like cats? <laughs> My trusty old friend, the eight inch jointer, got a little facelift with a new coat of Powermatic color paint and a new safety on off switch right here. I just had to give it a little refresh and make it look a little different than it did when I cut my fingers off. That's a little bit less of a reminder when I look at it and it's a different color. Are these know. extensions new? They are not new, but they are not standard. I can tell you that. I extended the bed on the in feed and the out feed by, oh, I don't know, that's like 20 inches, that's a I lot. think. This thing and is long. That is such that a is, good upgrade yeah. that anybody could do, well, almost anybody Yeah, if you've got an eight foot board laying on your out feed, it wants to fall off. And now it does. Not. This is amazing and it's really pretty cheap. I made it myself out of scrap metal and it has an adjustable foot so I can raise the height up and down. I will say though, in case somebody's wondering, and you might, is that I don't really adjust the in feed height. So somebody might adjust it regularly, like to go with a really shallow cut or a really deep cut. I don't. I have it set at like an eighth of an inch or maybe less than that. And I always leave it where it is. I don't find any need to change it. Otherwise, this leg that I've got going down to the ground would be a big problem. Yeah, that's what I do. Hey, what are these? <laughs> <laughs> so in addition to the regular extension that I put on there, I added these rollers at some point in time that helped me hold a really long board from just hanging off the back of the joiner. You know, if you've got a, I don't know, like a 14 foot board, you know, you can't hold it flat. And so these are adjusted to be at the height of the in-feed side of the joiner. These tools were the ones that were back there where the CNC was yep. when we did the video. That's when I, I thought they would be there forever until yeah, the CNC thing it really thing seemed like happened. they would be. And I had to give up something too to get the CNC in here. I had to give up my radial arm saw, oh, which I used you're a right. lot. And it was here. It was right I there. I do remember that. And that's the only place I could think of to put these two tools, which I use regularly. So we don't really have to have a radial arm saw. No, Chop but saw kind of does. I did, I did kind of steal our job site saw though you may have noticed that we don't have oh, a job oh. site chop saw anymore <laughs> because i it's right here so i don't know about that that's why we're using that little what is it a heart the heart we're using the heart thanks again johnny <laughs> for the heart um Whoa, hey, 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 hey. it's flat on no way no i'm serious 100 percent. i believe you flat on the end. he's just dude he's now he believes <laughs> he was making fun of me but now like he someone just told him the earth was round he's like what <laughs> Keeping the dust out of the air and out of your lungs is a high priority in any wood shop. So that's why I've made an effort to size up all the ducting straight to the tool that gets more airflow and retrieving more dust from the machine. So I use this boot right here. This is from like, you know, a heating and air conditioning uh, supply place. Yeah, in order it's to, like a four by 12 register. Yeah, that's right. To connect my five inch duct right to the machine. And that's it, on a, uh, a drum sander. It's a drum it's a jet sander. drum sander. Yep. That's a nice tool. Makes a lot of dust. Before the redo of the shop, I only had like two drawers to put things in. And I realized that the drawers Sounds were Sounds like full. my closet. 
Yeah, they were full of stuff, so I liked the drawers and I wanted more drawers. I was gonna go buy kitchen cabinets and put them in here. I realized they're pretty expensive. And then I came across these like mechanic style toolboxes. And let me show you right here. I'm trying to get organized, but I found that this is a really good system here. Nice big drawers. It's got this like padded yep, stuff um, slide around. thing in the bottom. And uh, I've, I've got almost everything I need in these drawers here. I've got my tools. I got space for everything. And I have things separated into areas, you know? So that's kind of like woodworking stuff here. I've got more like, uh, it's kind of a mess, but this is more just like uh, wrenches and, and uh, magnets screwdrivers. Nice I put magnets in places. Um, I've got all my air chuck stuff in one place. I've got all my pneumatic uh, like guns in one spot. I've got all my Craig uh, jig related things in one spot. And I've got all my old tools that I may never use, but they're really cool and I have to keep them here. All one day we right ought to there. do a video where we just pull out all this old stuff and figure there, out how to use it. Yeah, there's cool <laughs> stuff in there. I, I would love to put it on display even. Like if I had a cabinet um, that had it all I'm on sure display. Jamie would let you hang it in the bedroom. Yeah, right, <laughs> sure. It's just kind of nice now that things have a place and I, nice. I don't have it all crammed into one place. Like all of it mixed, I mean. Uh, I made some attachments actually. Uh -oh, um, you know, this this I made uh, an attachment here to go into uh, that spot right there. And actually it's for a different wheel, not for this wheel, but because I'm sharpening some carbide lathe metal cutting cutters. Okay, I'm sharpening these. And I had to buy a special wheel though, um, <laughs> because that one won't cut carbide material. So I got this diamond. What? coated wheel. I was wondering where all of our profit was going. <laughs> buying diamond. It's got coated. diamonds. Torment diamonds, wheels. boy's best friend. <laughs> this was expensive. Like, I, won't, gee, I won't Jamie, lie. You know, I don't know where all of our money went. There it is. I don't know. Found it's it. right here. But I got sharp stuff. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's some ratchet traps. Nothing else. I'm gonna see. This is a shot I've put in several videos of all this wood blocks under his workbench. And the main reason is to weight the bench down and make it heavier. That's right, so it won't scoot around when I'm beating and banging on stuff. Uh, the reason I got this, it's hard maple. I got it from a furniture factory that shut down and these would make excellent cutting boards. I've always thought I'll just make a bunch of cutting boards. But to date, <laughs> I don't know if I've even made one because I don't have time. But they look cool under the work. They do, yeah. They, they weight it down. Yeah, they hold it down. They're holding it right now. It looks like you work with wood when you have all that in there. <laughs> yeah. All right, I think we're going to wrap it up. All right. We should have cool. done this sooner. Well, we should have. Well, thanks for checking yeah. it out. Thanks for checking out our video. We're going to let Jason do some disco dancing. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>